pictorial representation of statistical data. Pi diagram. Let us now learn how to represent the given data with the help of a pi diagram. In a pi diagram, the values of items are represented by sectors of a circle. Since the sectors resembles the slices of a pie, which is a bakery product like cake, it is called a pie diagram. Before learning how to construct a pie diagram, we will first learn the terms which are used in a pie diagram. The terms used in a pie diagram are sector and central angle. What is meant by central angle? Central angle is an angle formed at the center of the circle by its radii. In the figure, O is the center of the circle and the line segments OA and OB are the radii. The angle formed, that is angle AOB, is the central angle. What is meant by sector of a circle? Sector of a circle is a part of the circle enclosed by two radii and their intercepted arc. In the figure, OA and OB are the radii of the circle and arc AB is the intercepted arc. The shaded region shown here is the sector of the circle. Construction of pi diagram in a pi diagram, the relative values of items are represented by sectors of a circle. We will use the fact that the total of all given values corresponds to the measure of the circular arc, that is, 360 degrees. Therefore, we can find the central angle of each item or component by using the formula central angle theta is equal to value of the component upon total value of all the components into 360 degrees. The value of each component can be represented by the sectors of a circle with the help of central angles corresponding to it. Let us now construct a pi diagram for the given data. The table shows different components and their corresponding expenditure in rupees. We have to draw a pie chart. The first step is to prepare a table containing the items or components and the values of the items. Here, the table contains components, expenditures and measures of central angles. The measure of central angle can be found by using the formula central angle is equal to value of the component upon total value of all the components into 360 degrees. Here, the total value of all the components, that is, total expenditure is 1440. The value of the raw material is given as 800. Therefore, the measure of the central angle for raw material is 800 upon 1440 into 360. On simplifying, we get the measure of central angle for raw material is 200 degrees. The measure of central angle for labor is 300 upon 1440 into 360, which on simplifying is 75 degrees. Proceeding in the same manner, we get the measure of central angle for transportation is 25 degrees, for packing is 25 degrees and for taxes is 35 degrees. Note that the sum of the measures of central angles of all items is 360 degrees. We will now draw a pie diagram by using these measurements. We first draw a circle of convenient radius with center O. 
we then draw a radius OA in the positive direction of X axis. We then draw sectors of respective central angles in anti-clockwise direction. For that, we first draw an angle AOB with measure 200 degrees in the anti-clockwise direction. How do you draw an angle with measure 200 degrees which is larger than 180 degrees? For that, we first make an angle of measure 180 degrees with OA and then draw the remaining 20 degrees angle adjacent to it. We now get an angle of total measure 200 degrees using radii OA and OB. This sector represents the component raw material. We next draw angle BOC equal to 75 degrees in anti-clockwise direction. This sector represents labor. The central angles corresponding to transportation, packing and taxes are 25 degrees, 25 degrees and 35 degrees. Therefore, we draw angle COD and angle DOE in the anti-clockwise direction. The remaining angle, angle EOA, is automatically of measure 35 degrees and corresponds to taxes. The sectors corresponding to these angles represents transportation, packing and taxes. Thus, we get a pi diagram of the given data as shown. Let us draw one more pi diagram. Electricity used by farmers during different parts of day for irrigation is shown in the table. We have to draw a pi diagram for the given data. We first prepare a table showing part of day, percentage of electricity used and measure of central angle. The measure of central angle corresponding to the percentage of electricity used in the morning is 108 degrees. In the afternoon is 144 degrees. In the evening is 72 degrees and in the night is 36 degrees. The sum of the measures of central angles is 360 degrees. Let us now draw a pi diagram. We will first draw a circle of convenient radius with center O. We will then draw radius OA in the positive direction of X axis. Let us now draw an angle AOB of measure 108 degrees. This sector represents the percentage of electricity used in the morning. Next, we draw angle BOC of measure 144 degrees. This sector represents the percentage of electricity used in the afternoon. We next draw angle COD of measure 72 degrees. This sector represents the percentage of electricity used in the evening. Now, let us measure angle DOA. Angle DOA is of measure 36 degrees which is the measure of central angle corresponding to night. Thus, this sector represents the percentage of electricity used at night. Thus, we get a pi diagram for the given data as shown. Reading the pi diagram So far, we have learned how to represent the given data in the form of a pi diagram. Sometimes the data are already represented in a pi diagram. We will now learn to read the pi diagram with the help of some examples. The given pi diagram represents expenditure on different items in constructing a building. We have to find the answers to the given questions. First, we have to find the expenditure on each of the items 
if the total construction cost is rupees 5 lakh 40000 we know the formula measure of central angle theta is value of the item upon total value of all the items into 360 degrees therefore central angle for cement is equal to expenditure on cement upon total expenditure into 360 degrees substituting the given values we get 75 is equal to expenditure on cement upon 5 lakh 40 thousand into 360 therefore expenditure on cement is equal to 75 upon 360 into 5 lakh 40 thousand on simplifying we get the expenditure on cement is rupees 1 lakh 12,500. In the same way, we can find the expenditure on other items by using the formula expenditure on an item is equal to theta upon 360 into total expenditure. The central angle theta representing the expenditure on bricks is of measure 50 degrees. Therefore, the expenditure on bricks is 50 upon 360 into 5 lakh 40 thousand which on simplification is equal to rupees 75 thousand. Next, we have to find the expenditure on labor. The central angle representing expenditure on labor is 100 degrees. Hence, the expenditure on labor is of measure equal to 100 upon 360 into 5 lakh 40 thousand, which on simplification is equal to rupees 1 lakh 50 thousand. For timber, the measure of central angle is 90 degrees. Therefore, the expenditure on timber is 90 upon 360 into 5 lakh 40 thousand which on simplification is equal to rupees 1 lakh 35 thousand the last one is steel for steel the measure of central angle is 45 degrees therefore the expenditure on steel is 45 upon 360 into 5 lakh 40 thousand which is equal to rupees 67 thousand 500 the next question is to find the item with a maximum expenditure from the expenditure on each item that is cement bricks labor timber and steel it is clear that the expenditure on labor is the maximum and it is rupees 1 lakh 50 thousand. The next question is to find the item with the minimum expenditure. The expenditure on steel is rupees 67,500. And this amount is the least among all the other expenditures. Hence, steel is the item with the minimum expenditure. 